You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. For the last few weeks, Dave and I have been discussing issues related to psychology in the church in this first segment of our program, and it's a subject, as we've said, that is not without controversy among Christians. Well, Dave, controversy aside, it's a very critical topic that needs to be addressed. And people would say, well, why is that? Well, first and foremost, the basic methods and concepts of psychological counseling are completely at odds with what the Bible teaches. Secondly, the problem is exacerbated because Mm -hmm. the evangelical church has become one of the primary sources of referrals for counseling services of clinical psychologists. And thirdly, it's a statement by evangelical churches to their own congregations as well as to the world that the Word of God is not sufficient for mental, emotional, and behavioral issues, that is, everyday problems of living, and therefore the church can't handle such problems. And this, of course, is a new wrinkle for the church, which has been ministering to the needs of believers for nearly 2,000 years. Dave, how did the evangelical church get caught up in psychotherapy? Well, Tom, um, that wouldn't be easy to to analyze, but there are a number of factors. Uh, yeah. The truth is that society wasn't that much involved in psychotherapy uh, until after World War II, mm-hmm. a little bit after World War One. But after World War Two, we got a lot of problems. You know, uh, the guys coming back. And, They've got battle fatigue, or they keep changing the names, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I guess the universities uh, realize that here is a, a growing industry we could tap into. I think the psychologists and so forth realize that. When I was, uh, when was I in university? I think I began in 1946. Very, very few people were psych majors Mm -hmm. in those days. And they were not looked up to on the campus. I'm just giving my own opinion. I was both at UCLA and Oregon State University. And uh, people looked upon them as kind of crazies. You know, they, they had problems, emotional problems, and they couldn't deal with them. And so they're studying this to try to figure themselves out. The professors tended to be not just eccentric, but uh, weird. <laughs> and uh, But somehow, uh, maybe it was an easy major to get into, Tom. I'm not sure. I remember... Uh, even later than that, when I, my wife and I owned and I was the administrator of a convalescent hospital, uh, the doctors, the MDs who cared for the patients, uh, they uh, didn't have too high a regard for the psychiatrists either. And they would tell me stories about this guy. He couldn't really make it in medical school. Uh, and he didn't quite, uh, you know wasn't quite up to the standards, but he did pass, and and um, he decided to go into psychiatry. Let me just put a, uh, uh, a little insert there. Um, you know, my father was a psychiatrist, and uh, as a medical doctor, uh, coming out of the war, he was a doctor during the Second World War, mm-hmm. and uh, his first occupation within medicine was uh, family practice. And then he decided, I, uh, you know, uh, that he wanted to get out of medicine, <laughs> seriously. And what he did uh, in, in attempting to do that, he turned to psychiatry. Because as we've mentioned uh, in the program over the past couple of weeks, psychotherapy, psychological counseling has to do with conversation. It doesn't have to do with medicine at all. 
Although they do dispense some medications. Right. They can uh, write prescriptions. And right. certainly uh, over the last 50 years, the, mm. the orientation of, of psychiatry has changed somewhat. But basically, he wanted to get out of medicine. He mm -hmm. wanted to get into something, that, as, as you've described, uh, had to do with conversation, had to do with talk, was much mm -hmm. easier. Although... It had lots of ramifications, as we know, because uh, in this field, it has one of the highest occupational hazard rates, which we'll talk about in the, in the days to come. Right. Tom, let's elaborate on that a little bit. He didn't become a neurologist or a neurosurgeon, mm -hmm. which is working on the brain, but a psychiatrist. Now, you don't have to bother with physical bodies. You don't really bother with a physical brain because all this talk about chemical imbalances, there are no chemical imbalances pertaining to any maladies that anyone has ever mm -hmm. discovered. And I, we've probably quoted uh, Peter Bregan, one of the world's leading uh, experts on psychotropic drugs, who says that the only chemical imbalances we know of are those that are caused by the drugs they give them to cure the chemical imbalances that they never diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So what your dad was doing now, he doesn't have to have, you know, have to examine bodies, and some of that, I guess, could be rather unpleasant. Dave, uh, I think I have to insert something here just mm -hmm. very briefly. Uh, you know, my dad at the time, uh, we're talking about uh, medicine in the 50s, mm -hmm. psychiatry in the 50s. Mm -hmm. They did do lobotomies and certainly wow. electric shock therapy and so on. But that's mm -hmm. as close to the physical uh, as they ever got. That was horrible. So you don't have the unpleasantry of examining bodies, which I certainly, that would be one thing that would keep me from going into medicine. <laughs> uh, but uh, now you can talk to people. Well, what's your problem? How are you feeling? Well, let me, um, you know, and, and so forth. And um, rather uncertain. Tom, I wish I could remember all the people. We could make a movie out of some of the people that I have s talked with and seen over the years. And mm -hmm. I'm not orderly enough to have kept track of them. I probably have somewhere <laughs> in a file. But I remember the Jewish wife of a Jewish psychiatrist. And, uh, well, she'd been divorced by him. A lot of divorce among the psychiatrists. Was, a lot of suicides, a lot of uh, drug use, alcohol uh, abuse, on and on, as well, they said. The highest of any profession. Yes. And uh, she would tell me, you ought to hear what they say about their patients at those cocktail parties. I mean, they make fun of them. And you know that Freud said that a patient is only good <laughs> for making money. You're not going to cure them. You're not going to really help them. But um, I can remember when I was in the business world, I remember a secretary or two. I can think of a bookkeeper. Uh, they, they thought they needed psych, psychiatric help. And I can tell you, Tom, when they got hooked on this weekly uh, uh, session. They never got off of it, mm -hmm. uh, at least the last I knew of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that you get cured from. And now, Tom, why also would uh, the church go into this? Well, it turned out to be a growth industry. Uh, the psychiatric hospitals were just overloaded uh, talking people into needing this. And you know what the DSM is. Well, you've got all of these. You increasingly have more and more and more mm -hmm. psychiatric problems. The so DSM called. being the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of so-called Mental Disorders. It's right. the Bible of... Uh, what they believe are, are wrong with people. Started right. out, there were, I think, less than 150. Uh... For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 